Ask yourself, when does he start making money? Unfortunately, he's made a crucial business mistake. Today, I'm gonna to share with you one of the most powerful forces in business. I'd say almost as powerful as the 80-20 rule. This is Tim Francis from Profit Factory. Once upon a time, there was a man who wanted to start a vending machine business. Classic, just like you saw in your high school. He says, I wanna build these things as efficiently as possible to save as much money as possible in the setup. And so, when he takes shipment of these five vending machines, they're in pieces and he has to build them out. So he grabs his box cutters, he opens up all five boxes thinking, hey, I've already got the box cutter in my hand, why would I waste any time putting it down and doing anything else? He gets all five open. He then says, I'm gonna build the base of the first one. He does, goes well, he says, okay, now that I've figured it out, I'm gonna do it for all five. And so it goes for all five frames, all five racks, all five curly spooly things, all five electronics, and on he goes. And you know what? He probably does build it more efficiently than any other way. He's taking advantage of like the production line mentality. Unfortunately, he's made a crucial business mistake. Ask yourself, when does he start making money? Unfortunately, it's only after the fifth machine is built and it's now been sent out to a sports facility or to a high school to, to be used. When does he get market feedback on if the food inside is good or bad? Unfortunately, only after the fifth machine. What if some kids figure out how to vandalize them or how to steal the money? Unfortunately, he finds that out only after the fifth machine is done. And so the amount of rework that he has to do to retrofit all of his machines, to place them in different places and or change what's on the inside is monstrous. It's five times bigger than it needs to be. If he would have just built the first machine in its entirety, even if it would have been a little bit slower and taken a little bit more time, he could have gotten market feedback right away. And not only market feedback, but also feedback on like his internal process of how it's going. For example, if some kids did figure out on machine number one how to steal a change, when he goes to build machines number two and three, he can change exactly what the internal structure looks like to protect against theft. So the big, the big force that I'm sharing with you that's as powerful as 80-20, I think, is the idea of feedback. Feedback is so crucial, not just in sales and marketing, but also in the operations of how we lead our businesses. An example of feedback in your own company, behind the scenes, would be saying every two weeks, hey, what did we learn about our process? Where did we get stuck? I'll give you an example. On one of the marketing teams that I led, at the end of two weeks, we did what's called a retrospective. That just, it's a fancy word for saying, let's look back and say, how did our process go the last couple weeks? And our project manager told me that, you know, Tim, it was a good, it was a good sprint. However, we found ourselves stopping four or five times a week to ask you for permission to buy photos on iStock Photo. And I said, okay, that's a good point. Now that I think about it, yeah, you did have to stop a bunch. What do you suggest we do? And she said, well, if you could just give us authority to spend you know, a couple hundred bucks a week on photos, then we wouldn't have to stop and ask you. And I said, for sure, that sounds great. So that's what I mean by behind the scenes, getting feedback and reflecting on what's happened so that you can get better. A great customer facing or front stage version of feedback is something like NPS. If you've ever heard of Net Promoter Score, it's been responsible for building entire Fortune 100 companies. And it's a single simple question. It's like the 80-20 of questions to say, um, on a scale of zero to 10, what was your experience working with us today or with your purchase or with your customer service experience? Anybody who rates nine or 10 is considered a promoter. They're very happy. Anybody who says seven or eight is considered neutral and one, and one or zero through six is considered a detractor. If all you did in your business was figure out who those detractors are who are dissatisfied and then you're like, God forbid we pick up the phone and actually call a customer I know, it's a crazy idea. And ask them, say, you know, I see that you rated us only a five today or a six. I'm curious because I'm committed to our business getting better with every passing day. What was, what, what caused you to rate, it, rate us a six? And you would be amazed how much people will tell you. Things that maybe you didn't even realize were going on. And then from there, if you go and take action on those improvements, it will not be long before you're seeing conversion rates climb, satisfaction rates go up, more referrals coming your way, everything.
Another great example of feedback in motion is um, Scrum. I was so amazed when, uh, tip of the hat to Corey Basaraba for telling me about Scrum. I was so amazed when I saw Scrum. I literally flew to Chicago on four days notice and took the full Scrum certification. The big takeaway here is instead of spending 100% of the project time building and building and building and building and then only getting feedback at the end, it's, it's saying in 2% of project time, how can we build out just a few features of what we're looking for and build them out so completely that we could put them in a user's hands, whether that's an internal teammate or an external customer and get their feedback to say, what do you like about this product? What do you think could be done differently? Instead of building out the entire you know, 50 page website with a blog and checkout pages and full integration and embedded videos and on and on and on, what if all you did was come up with the first three pages that somebody could click through? Or even a smaller increment would be to come up with just the graphic design of that page. And now people may not be able to click on it, but they can see it and give you feedback on the colors and the fonts and the layout. Hold on now, there's actually a smaller increment. What if we did a pencil drawing? I mean, you could whip that up in maybe half an hour and get feedback instantly from your potential customer or client. So that's what I mean by scaling it back. You can't click the pencil drawing, but you can see enough of the layout and what some of the headlines are and whatnot that now you can get real world feedback. Ask the people and they will tell you. And then for goodness sakes, do something good with what they told you. Feedback is an incredibly powerful tool inside of business. I encourage you to ask yourself, what could I change about my business that would allow me to get more feedback? And then from there, what would I have to do in my business to take action on the feedback? If you found this video to be useful, I encourage you to share it. Be a great friend to a few other entrepreneurs. Let them see the idea of feedback and all the different ways that it can be implemented. I bet you they'll thank you for helping them build their business. In the meantime, my name is Tim Francis from ProfitFactory.com. I thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me here, and I'm cheering you on as you build your business. Onwards and upwards, my friend.